Hello, my name is Benji, and today we are talking about some popular houseplants and their potential alternatives. So these are other plants that I think still fill the same role or have a similar look, but look more interesting, more unique, or generally just look cooler and look better in my opinion. And they also might be easier to care for as well. If you have any plants that you prefer over some more popular ones, let me know in the comments because I'm curious to hear what plant recommendations you guys have. First on the list is the Ficus lyrata also called the fiddle leaf fig. I think most people are familiar with this plant. It was like super popular 2016, 2017. And back then it was like the hottest plant on the market. It was so hard to find those. But you know, this plant, I think some people either really like it or they hate it. Maybe they had some bad experiences with it or maybe they just don't like the look. This is one of those plants that my friends always ask for help about. I think that they just require a lot more sun than people expect. And to me, I like them but I don't think that they work very well in smaller apartments or smaller spaces. For them to look good to me, they need to be pretty tall and they need to be branching. And for people that live in apartments like me, that's not really a very feasible thing to do. I think fiddle leaf figs look really good in lofted apartments with really tall ceilings. They also have very large leaves, so they look very, oh, do you wanna come up? Theo is going to join me. But like I was saying, fiddle leaf figs just have very large leaves that take up a lot of space, and I think they can look really heavy in a small room. I have a few other plants that I think fit this tree role that people desire and are better suited as house plants. You guys probably already know the rubber plant or the ficus elastica. There are a ton of different varieties of this, so you can get like a dark one, a green one, a white variegated one, and then there's a whole bunch of different other variegations that are out right now. There's like the Honduras, there's a Ficus Shiveriana. You can choose one that you like or that fits your aesthetic. The Ficus Elastica also has smaller leaves than the Ficus Lyrata. Being in a houseplant setting, the smaller leaves kind of help the Ficus Elastica to look more tree-like because the scale of the plant itself and also the space it's in. Ficus Elastica also seems to be a little bit easier to care for than the Ficus Lyrata in my opinion. Then there's also the Ficus Umbellata. I talked about this in one of my previous videos. I'm currently bending it and trying to make an interesting shape with it. This ficus also grows super fast, much faster than the ficus lyrata and the ficus elastica. So if you still want those like broad leaves that the fiddle leaf fig has, then you can go for this ficus umbellata and it'll grow really fast for you. Moving away from the ficus genus, there's also Schifflera. I feel like Schifflera are kind of an overlooked plant in the houseplant community. And I've seen some aged ones at nurseries that have a cool trunk shape and give you that tree-like look. I have a plant that I think is a Schifflera, but it might be a Tubidanthus. That plant is really pretty as well. I'd also recommend that. And then there's also the Pachira aquatica or the money tree. I don't really see people talk about this plant that much and maybe it's because it's like too common, but it's a really pretty plant and it's easy to grow. It can handle more low light situations and it's a fast growing plant as well. I've seen some really large specimens of these at big box stores and also at nurseries where they're like these giant trunks and giant stumps. Moving on, the next plant on my list is the cane plant. I'm referring to the Dracaena fragrance and the Dracaena warnecii. So to me, the tree-like Dracaena are in two categories. There are those ones that are just like stumps with little bushes on the top. Normally you see them potted in groups of three and I don't know, I've just never been a big fan of these. I don't know what it is exactly, but I do see these a lot in nurseries, so I'm assuming people are buying them. I think there are alternatives to these that are still Dracaena that look better and have just like more of an interesting shape and I think fit better as houseplants. So they are the Dracaena marginata and the Dracaena reflexa. I have the Dracaena reflexa, I talk about it all the time, and these just have such a better look than the straight up stumpy vertical counterparts. The Dracaena marginata and reflexa kind of fit into that like wabi sabi look that is very popular. You can fit it into your home and your decor in an interesting way. Like it can go over your couch or maybe like go over your table or something if it's tall enough. I don't know, I'll put in some examples of what I mean. So moving on, the next plant is Platycerium bifurcatum. This is the most common form of staghorn fern that you're gonna see when you go to a nursery. I haven't actually seen any other staghorn species at nurseries. These are great, I love them. I have one or two myself, but there are a lot more interesting varieties out there. I have my gallery wall of them and there are more difficult varieties and harder to find varieties, but there are two species 
species that I think look really cool and look different than the basic platysterium and are also not that expensive and not that difficult to find, but you might have to buy them online. I'm gonna show you guys the plant alternatives, um, but I have to take Theo off me and I feel really bad about moving him. I'm sorry, Theo, I'm sorry. I gotta move you. Here is the Platycerium bifurcatum. This is the first one that I ever owned. And this is the one that you will typically see at nurseries. It has a nice look to it, very classic, but it doesn't have any like super interesting characteristics. Instead of getting the Platycerium bifurcatum, this is a Platycerium vici, and it has these really beautiful silver fronds to it. It's like kind of a powdery silver, and the shield fronds look really beautiful. This species is not too expensive. I bought this one maybe for $30 on Etsy, and to me the vici is one of the most beautiful Platycerium species, especially as it grows larger and more mature. The shield fronds look so perfect. I mounted this one in one of my previous videos a while back. I'll show you guys some before and afters. Started off just in a pot and then I mounted it and now I just love how the shield frond is wrapping around. And then I have another one. This is my smaller one. And then the next alternative to the common staghorn fern is the platycerium superbum. This is a pretty large specimen, as you can tell. I bought it already mature, and a large one like this is gonna cost you a little bit more money, probably 150 or $200. But you should be able to find smaller ones on eBay and Etsy for like $30, I would say. They used to be more difficult to come by, but I've seen more of them for sale. The Super Bum looks amazing. Such a different look than the typical staghorn fern. Also, I have this begonia that I put on the top um, at the crown of it and it looks pretty cool. They're like growing together now. This isn't like an alternative plant, but sometimes I see people mount their staghorn ferns on like wood tree slices. I don't know what they're called. I don't think that this looks great. I prefer to mount my platycerium either on cork bark like this vici, or I'm using these pre-made redwood boards that I bought from this website called Fern Factory. But recently I've really been liking black walnut wood planks. They just have a very streamlined and clean look to it. it doesn't distract too much from the actual plant and I like the darker coloration. You can find a lot of wood selling shops on Etsy that have different kinds of woods. Some good woods are black walnut, cedar, and redwood. And most of these Etsy shops will cut custom sizes for you so you can choose whichever size you need. It also doesn't cost too much. I was able to get five of these for around $23 including shipping. So that's pretty good in my opinion. I don't know much about wood prices but to me that is a pretty good price. And then you can easily make them into a mount by attaching a hook to them. The next popular houseplant on my list is the Anthurium andrianum. And this is the Anthurium that you see in most nurseries. It has those very bright red flowers. I think sometimes they can be white. I honestly don't know how I feel about the flowers. Sometimes I kind of like them and then sometimes they weird me out. These plants are cute. They just have like very basic foliage, but I think there are some other great Anthurium alternatives that just look more interesting and have more more of an impact as a house plant. So this is my Anthurium magnificum crossed with crystallinum. Maybe like a year ago, these more harder to find Anthurium species were probably like over a hundred dollars or so, but now I've seen that the price has dropped significantly. They're a lot more accessible and they're much easier to find. I highly recommend either the Anthurium magnificum or Anthurium crystallinum or the Anthurium clearnervium, which I also have. Here is my Anthurium clearnervium. These species have darker foliage and more interesting shape, and I think they just have a much better impact. Uh, as a house plant. This hybrid I'm using as my coffee table plant and this one surprisingly doesn't need that much light. It's probably like 12 feet from a south facing window. It's still putting out new leaves so I think the three interim species that I listed are surprisingly easy to care for. The only thing that I watch out for is making sure that I don't let the substrate dry out. So whenever I let the substrate dry out too much I get these crispy tips or like crispy edges. I should probably pot this up into a larger pot soon. That way I don't have to water as frequently. I'm not sure which of these like rarer Anthurium species are the easiest to start out with. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think I would recommend either the Magnificum or the Crystallinum for first timers. But yeah, these are much prettier in my opinion compared to the 
red flowering anthurium. The next popular houseplant on the list is the snake plant. I believe the Latin name for the commonly available snake plant is Dracaena trifiscata. The snake plant was reclassified not that long ago from Sansevieria to Dracaena and I'm still getting used to that reclassification. I'm sure you guys know what a snake plant is. They are commonly recommended to first-time plant owners. I recommend them too because, I don't know, they're just like kind of indestructible and so easy to take care of, but I don't really love how they look. I think it's because they kind of just like stick out from the pot and go straight up. I often see these with like crispy tips or crispy edges or brown edges. And what sucks about the browning is that you can't get rid of it unless you just remove the entire blade of the snake plant. Unlike other plants, you could just remove the leaf, but with the snake plant, you can't really do that. I'm not a big fan of snake plants in general, but there are a few that I do like. There's the silvery one that I think is called the Bantol Sensation. It has a more slender shape, and to me, the color is really nice. There's also some dwarf varieties that I like. Like there's one that I think is called the Dwarf Samurai. I saw it potted in like a large dish pot with multiple dwarf samurais in it and I thought that looked really cool. Snake plants, I think they're really great plants for beginners and good plants to learn from. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of snake plants. I wonder what you guys think. Do you guys also agree? To me, they just look a little boring. Like they just go straight up and don't really interact with the environment at all. The next popular houseplant on the list is the Maranta. The ones that you most often see in nurseries are the red striped one and the lemon yellowy striped one. And I think that those look great. I'm a fan of them. I just think there are other ones that look a little bit nicer. So there is the silver band Maranta and the black Maranta. The black one is still very expensive. I don't own it personally. I think a cutting would probably be over like $50. I know Steve's Leaves is selling them and I believe they're selling them for over $100, but the silver band Maranta is much cheaper. This is my silver band Maranta. It's pretty small. I got it as a cutting and I need to pot it up. It's pretty cute. I have it paired with this nice little blue pot. The black Maranta and the silver Maranta are more unique to me because those colors you don't often see in houseplants. They're also not as bold as the red or the bright green. They have a more subdued look to them, which I enjoy. The silver band Maranta used to be pretty expensive, but now I think you can find them on Etsy and eBay and also on Steve's Leaves for around $30, maybe $20. So the last plant I'm gonna talk about is the Bird of Paradise. This is a pretty popular house plant that I see used in like home advertisements and like home decor things, but I don't know many people that actually grow this as a house plant. In Southern California where I live, they are everywhere outside and they thrive in full sun. So I think that kind of gives you a good indication that maybe they're not the best house plants just because of the limited light that most people have. Honestly, I haven't grown this plant myself and I don't think I will because like I said, I'm just so used to it being an outdoor plant that I don't see any need to bring it inside my home. I don't have any alternatives that look like the Bird of Paradise, but I'm assuming that people get these because they like the height and the big broad leaves. So instead, I think I would just recommend like a basic Monstera. I know the Monstera is like a basic alternative, but you still can get that height and those broad leaves and they are more suitable for indoor growing. Other than the Monstera, I also think that a good alternative that really doesn't look like the Bird of Paradise at all is the Australian tree fern. And there are a lot of different species and varieties. I'm not that knowledgeable on them, but I'll put some examples on screen. I also see these growing outside in Southern California. The tree ferns that I see thriving are in more shaded areas and not receiving direct sun like the Bird of Paradise. So I think these are more suited for indoor growing and they look very unique. I don't really see them that often as houseplants, but I think they kind of fill the same category category as a bird of paradise. They can grow very tall and have big, broad, pretty foliage. And to me, the foliage also looks more unique. The trunk is also very unique as well. Let me know if you are growing a tree fern in your home. I'm curious to know how that's going. I do have a friend, his name is Adam. He's a ceramicist. His Instagram and stuff is third floor and he has a tree fern in his home. It's not a super tall one, but it looks really pretty. And I might try and grow one in my house now now that I think of it, but I don't have enough space, so probably not. 
Okay, so thank you for watching. Like I said earlier, if you have any alternatives to popular houseplants that you recommend, let me know in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.